Odysseus is on its way to Piraeus, its port of registry. The Aegean Sea holds no secrets for this 145 meter liner. It's at home here. On board, as we follow the same route taken by Jason and the Argonauts when they set out, as the legend goes, in quest of the Golden Fleece, we will discover islands and shores whose mere names have always conjured up visions in the traveler. Istanbul, Rhodes, Ephesus, Mykonos, and Athens, the point of departure for our cruise. Although it's now a huge modern metropolis, Athens has retained some of the small town charm that it still had, with just barely 10,000 inhabitants during the 19th century. As we leave the main thoroughfares and head straight into the heart of the city, we discover the central marketplace. The colors, the smells, the hubbub of the crowd. This place is pure entertainment. As we follow this Turkish, sorry, Greek, coffee delivery man, we come upon Monastiraki. The old bazaar of the Ottoman era has now become a flea market. As we traverse the rectilinear grid of streets that crisscross the modern city, every so often we come upon a Byzantine church, a Greek or Roman temple. In Athens, past and present interweave, and every avenue ends up in a crossroads of civilizations. In front of the old palace, it's time for the changing of the guard. The Evzones, literally the soldiers with the beautiful belts, execute their strange robot-like ballet while, a little further off, in the serenity of the former Agora, stone giants guard the ancient temple of Thessian. But let's go pay a visit to the star the one who everyone dreams of and who millions of spectators rush to see every year, the one who has the most remarkable cluster of monuments from ancient Greece to offer us, the Acropolis. Dramatic entrance, the Propylia. The Parthenon, 60 meters long, 30 meters wide, crowning piece of the Acropolis. This temple was built in the fifth century BC in honor of the goddess Athena. The small temple in marble, Athena Nike. The Erechtheion, displaying the famous portico of the Caryatids, which takes its name from the six statues of female figures that support the structure, was the primary place of worship in the Acropolis. The Acropolis Museum contains masterpieces, particularly sculptures, found exclusively during excavations carried out on the site.
Before we leave Athens, let's go to the Herod Atticus Theatre, located at the foot of the illuminated Acropolis, for a final encounter with Greek tragedy. While the Odysseus makes its way northeast towards Turkey, life on board starts to get organized. Byzantium, Constantinople, Istanbul. Together, these names evoke the 2,000 years of rich and turbulent history of this city, the only city in the world that spans two continents. Sailing slowly through the Bosphorus, the Odysseus offers us the amazing sight of east and west, side by side. As night is falling, the Odysseus arrives in the heart of Istanbul. The music of the Odysseus trails off into the night, 
and the cry of the Muezzin rings out, calling the faithful to prayer. The smell of cinnamon, vanilla, cumin, saffron, all the spices of the Orient come together in the Egyptian bazaar, one of the most fascinating places in Istanbul. Plunging into this oriental-style labyrinth, being engulfed by this gigantic Alibaba's cave, 3,000 shops, restaurants, banks, a veritable city within a city, to finally lose oneself with pleasure. Could there be any better way of exploring the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul? A water carrier with his enormous samovar. Kebab and fruit vendors. Simple jobs such as these continue to give Istanbul the feeling of an oriental city. As do the irreplaceable hammams or Turkish baths. we finally come to the historic center of Istanbul. Santa Sofia, the wonder of wonders. Constructed in the year 537 AD, almost 15 centuries ago, this church was for a long time the largest church in Christendom before being transformed into a mosque. And today, it's a museum with magnificent Byzantine mosaics on display. Across from Santa Sofia stands the Blue Mosque. With its many domes and its six tapered minarets, this extraordinary edifice owes its name to the blue tiles that adorn the interior. Top Kapi Palace was the residence of the Ottoman emperors until 1839. It has been turned into a museum and now contains fabulous treasures such as this famous 86 carat diamond. A tower of Galata, a bear leader, an old tram, even before we can finish this strange inventory, we're back on the Odysseus.
Sailing south towards Kushadasi, the festivities are in full force on board the Odysseus. While the crew introduces the passengers to the basics of navigation, the Odysseus arrives in Kushadasi. A famous seaside resort on the Aegean coast, Kushadasi primarily serves as a point of departure for Ephesus. This here is what we can see today of the House of Mary in Turkey. Mary never came to Turkey, only to the metropolis of the Roman province of Asia. And if John wanted to take Mary to safety, it would be by taking the boat from Caesarea Palestine, and Cyprus, Cyprus, Ephesus. You could find as many coasters then as you can find charters today. Just like people nowadays go to Mecca, they used to go to Ephesus in homage to Artemis, mother of the gods. Here we are, deep in the heart of Greek mythology. It was during the time of the Roman Empire that this town, then situated on the seaside, was in its heyday. Around the first century, there were 250,000 people living in Ephesus. The many structures and monuments still standing today attest to its importance in the past. Palaces, Odiums, fountains, libraries, theaters. During the annual festival of Artemis, which was held in the month of April, the town could accommodate nearly one million visitors who would come from Athens or Jerusalem for this occasion.
seven. The sun rises over Rhodes. The Odysseus pulls up alongside the quay. The Colossus of Rhodes has not welcomed any visitors for a very long time. An earthquake toppled this 32-meter bronze statue that once stood in the harbor here. Entrenched behind ramparts that extend for four kilometers lies the medieval city. But first of all, let's take a visit to Lindos. Have these women dressed in black who are hanging out their embroidery work ever been to the top of the Acropolis? Do they know that behind the medieval citadel are to be found the ruins of a Byzantine church and a Doric temple? Could you tell us where you go when you take your tourists around? Lindos, Hierapolis, Lindos and Lindos again. And so you visited all these places, I suppose? Visited them? No. Why? Because you haven't got the time? No, when I have a minute, I relax. Driven from the sacred land by the Ottomans, the Knights of St. John settled in Rhodes. Having come from France, Provence, Spain, and Italy, these knights built inns in the purest Gothic style, which also bore the imprint of their original homelands. Now an archaeological museum, the knight's former hospital houses works native to the island. In the hospital's main room, which once held a hundred beds, the knight's gravestones. A life-sized marble sculpture of Aphrodite bathing. A sepulchral stele with an elegant replica dating from 5 BC. Strolling at random through the alleyways of the medieval city, we come to the port of Mondraki, 
famous for its mills and its two columns, each one topped with a bronze hind. For starters, there are cheese stuffed pastries, meatballs, fried calamari and beans. Afterwards, we have fish fillets cooked in a sauce of tomatoes, wine and spices. And over here, souflaki and fillet kebabs. Greek Regina wine for a merry Greek dinner. Greek souvenirs. And so that the evening is truly Greek, Greek music. Day is just beginning to break as the Odysseus enters the natural volcanic harbor of Santorin. An explosion of incredible force occurred here in the 15th century BC. The island blew up, and the entire civilization that flourished there was swallowed up by the sea. Could the island of Santorin be a fragment of the mythic Atlantis?
We're on Santorin. The capital here is called Fira. Straight across on the other side, we can make out the crater which is still active. Down below is the old harbour. The stairway that leads up to Fira starts from down there. Over there, overlooking Fira, we can see the village of Fira Stefani, which means the crown of Fira. sail from Fira, where is somewhere over here, and we are going south through the Kameni Island to the exit. We are going to get the south course to Heraklion Crete. Hello, Apollon, Apollon to Odysseus. Odysseus to Apollon, we are going to the Catessera. Oh, that's good. Like it's good. Oh, but I don't have a stick on the body. Yes, I can say that. Of course, there is a special, a special connection, actually, because you know, uh, since the ancient years, since the ancient Greeks, they were dealing with sea. It was the only way to communicate between the islands, and it was the only way to communicate uh, with the people with the, in different islands. <laughs> You have to be good in public relations because the passengers are depending on you, not only on the safety, not only to get them from one place to the other, but also to have a nice time on board the ship. <laughs> The Odysseus heads towards Heraklion and Crete for the southernmost stop on our cruise. As she steps onto Cretan soil, this passenger knows that she's also setting foot on the island of the gods. A short return to the past. Zeus, the lord of the universe, is said to have married the princess Europa here.
They had several children, including the notorious Minos, the king who founded a civilization which... But let us listen instead. Why is it so important to come to Knossos? It is very important to come to visit Knossos, because it can be said to be the birthplace of practically all the European cultures. This place wasn't just a simple palace, but a great commercial, political, administrative and religious center on ancient Crete. There were kings and a simple people living here. They had well-equipped palaces. There were bathrooms with bathtubs in the second millennium before Jesus Christ. This was extraordinary for the time. When you visit Knossos, you have the opportunity to really go back into the labyrinth of antiquity, to explore the places and convoluted corridors that may perhaps lead you to the monster, the famous monster out of the past, the minotaur, half man, half bull, who particularly like to feed on human flesh. These paintings that we see here are copies. Can you tell us why and where are the originals now? When you visit the palace, you see that there are frescoes everywhere. They are in fact very good reproductions of the original frescoes, which are now on display in the archaeological museum in the city of Heraklion, where they can be better preserved. having you with us and we're all looking forward to see you soon again on one of our ships, on one of our cruises. <laughs> After a night of sailing, we take the still sleeping Patmos by surprise. Though tiny, it's barely 34 square kilometers in size, Patmos is one of the most illustrious islands in the world. This is where St. John the Apostle wrote the Book of Revelation.
Overlooking the town, a large fortress encloses the monastery of St. John. Dating from the 11th century, the Catholican was the monastery's main church. Its facade is entirely decorated with frescoes. And in it, there is a chapel bedecked with icons, as well as a treasure house. The monastery still houses a school of theology, and the biblical scenes which cover the walls of the former refectory still serve to inspire the monks of Patmos. The monastery of St. John disappears behind the mountain as the Odysseus heads towards Mykonos. Here on board we have, as you know, many nationalities, um, usually 27, 28 different nationalities, but the, the challenge and the enjoyment of a cruise is to bring all these people together, from the beauty of the ocean to the, the Greek islands, the different Greek islands, the things they're going to see, the new experiences, on board as well, the relaxation, you cannot sum it up into just one simple phrase, no.
the last stop before the Odysseus heads back to Piraeus, Mykonos. Mykonos, the White Isle, the most celebrated of the Greek islands. Oh, visiting Patmos was marvellous. The boat was very lovely. The people were wonderful. We had a great time. Despite the very high number of visitors, the island has not lost any of its charm, immaculate white alleyways, and has preserved its authenticity. The famous windmills stand out against the soft light of the setting sun that inundates the Bay of Mykonos. The Odysseus dares not break the spell surrounding the last stop on this cruise and patiently awaits the passengers and her captain. Thank you. 